and welcome to the stream, guys. This week, we'll be looking at Midjourney V5. Fling the wrong button. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Arpit. Welcome to this week. Yes. Hey, good to have you here, Daniel. All right. So listen, the plan is as per usual. We have a little warm up, you know, we we'll listen to a little bit of music and then we'll get into the content. This week, all about Midjourney V5 featuring GPT-4. Okay. And we have a guest. in about a minute, all right? up the room we're filling up the room okay so brief plan brief preview we'll do our official intro and all that in a second but brief preview is we're gonna be generating mid-journey images with gpt4 and we have a guest to help us out and to discuss all this so stay tuned for some gpt4 featuring mid-journey action that wraps up this, you know, quite long song. So let's get into it. All right, welcome everybody to this week's stream. We're gonna be covering GPT-4 featuring Midjourney. What, what we'll be looking at right here is the video that I uploaded on Friday, a little more in depth. We talked about how to use the advanced creative capabilities of GPT-4 to generate the prompts for you, as Midjourney V5 does require more advanced prompting than what we're used to from version 4. Remember, all you needed is, you know, a few emojis, a bunch of good keywords, maybe even two or three, and you got stunning results. Here, it's a little different. But we're going to be talking about all that and much more on today's live stream. And I have some special surprises for you. And one of those is today's guest. He'll be joining me for the next, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. And we'll be discussing all things Midjourney 5. And I'm lucky enough to have him on because he's really a Midjourney expert when it comes to this. When you check out his channel, Tokenized AI, 
you're going to find that most of his content revolves around Midjourney. And he has some extremely useful guides, but today we're lucky enough to have him on the channel here. So you can ask your questions, I can ask my questions, and we can see if we can get superior results together. So with that being said, um, Christian, welcome to the stream. Thank you for having me. Yes. This Great to be here. Very first time live on stream here with you guys. Um, and th your intro was great. Um, I'm just not sure whether you promised too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The people here know we love, uh, we're practitioners here. We love to try things out, break things and learn while we move through it. So again, the plan for today very roughly is discussing Midjourney V5, the biggest update in a while. We, we are finally, I mean, at this point, I, I feel kind of good about the decision that I made around 10 years ago that photography was not going to be the per career I'm going to pursue. Because at this point, that decision would have caught up with me. I went with the video route and ended up here. But to all my fellow photographers out there, I I, I, I feel with you, but it's, it's going to be a tough time. I, I have a lot of clients that I talk to um, and there's no real good reasons for, for like, you know, basic social media content to go towards photographers. I, I'm sorry to f say it, it's just the reality. But what we're going to be doing here today is we'll explore some of the capabilities so, you know, you can turn yourself from photographer into a AI powered photographer. And now you might, you might be able to get away with, you know, AI creation and selling it as your very own, you know, a new flavor of your work. So let's try and do that. But first, let's talk about V5. So what do you make of it? What do you make of this, this massive update? Do you have, you know, opinions on it? Um, and how does it compare to V4? I, I have massive opinions about it. I mean, I think everybody has. has. Um, I've been seeing so many comments about people complaining how it's ugly or it's too difficult or my old prompts don't work anymore. And you know what, to be honest, in, in my opinion, people, I think people don't read the release notes unfortunately yeah. and the release notes were quite obvious they said listen guys this is not a final version this is alpha and it is intentionally sort of not intentionally difficult but it is in a very realistic pro mode right now and so it's normal you know we, we need to sort of figure out how does this new beast work how does it feel how do we need to do things differently and yes i mean okay. just as an example today i was playing around experimenting myself because I'm relearning myself all over. We all um, are. And, there's, and there's been some really, really surprising changes too. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So before we get into that, I think you make some great points, especially the release notes. I believe there's a slight audio issue um, that is probably coming from your side. So maybe if you could reset something or switch, there's like a crackling. Um, we did a sound test uh, right okay. before we went live, but hey, that's this, and it all worked, but this is the nature of being live. So. Let me just expand on what you just said there. Maybe maybe you can switch something around and we'll fix it. Um, yep. So I, I agree, a lot of people don't uh, read the release notes. And I mean, there's good reason for that, right? There's, they're super long. And a lot of people just wanna use this stuff. They just wanna get the results. And if you, if you consider that the release notes are, you know, quite deep, and if you add on to that all the discussions that have been happening around it, and then if you add on that super long um, community hour um, they had, three and a half hours, I believe, if you're supposed to intake all that as a normal human being that, you know, where the task of where your job is not you know, creating YouTube content and explaining this. It's just, it's just not realistic, but that's why we are here. We, we spent, I mean, I personally spent the evenings um, of the past weekends just sitting in mid-journey and I'm excited to share some of those results here because I learned a bunch of new things, but I think that's just our task here, being that communication vessel between, you know, the release notes that are critical to read if you want, want to get the most out of it and uh, you guys, the viewers, the users, the practitioners. So yeah, I'm excited to explore all that. Um, let's see if if, we, uh, if the audio is better now. Yeah, so really sorry about that. You know, we did the testing and worst. Yeah, it's good. Great. It's perfect. It's perfect. If push no comes deal. to shove, I'll just go get my old sort of no, it's, iPhone. It's head, look, you know, if, if there's one thing my videography career taught me, it's that uh, live streams are never perfect. <laughs> um, they never are, uh, but we can certainly attempt. Um, anyway, with that being said, everything is working now. So we talked about the release notes. So maybe let's continue with that, with that train of thought. I mean, 
What What is like the number one thing you would tell a user that has never used V5 before, that is only used to V4? What, what would your advice to that person be? I think my advice would be, well, first of all, think about whether you really need to use V5 right now. <laughs> and because if it, it also uses a lot more GPU hours. So if if you're used to GP, you know, V version four and, and you felt like the stylization was right for you, then maybe stick with that for now. Um, because V5 is going to take a lot of changes. If you insist on using V5, then the first thing you need to think of is kind of, well, not throw out your old prompts, but you're going to have to be a lot more verbose, a lot more descriptive. So yes, like um, you mentioned it, ChatGPT might help out with that. Yeah, yeah, it really does help. Like for me personally, where it was not my main focus of like research and spending my time, it was just a real lifesaver. Uh, it creates those verbose natural language prompts that that it really likes. And and that is my, my personal advice here would be, um, yeah, if you're new to it, the number one thing you should probably know is that it it wants natural language. It wants sentences sentences as the ones we are uh, speaking right here. So when before it used to be, you know, like like ship, bottle, um, you know, seal, uh, sea, ocean, ship in a bottle maybe. Then now you really have to go in and, and give it a full sentence that describes it in rich detail. And the thing is, most people are not that good at this, including me. I mean. Hey, it's a real skill to take a, a mundane object and and come up with, uh, you know, four sentence long detailed description. That is not a skill most people need in their everyday life, and neither should they. So, that's what we are. That's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna see if we can use ChatGPT to get more out of this. So, with that being said, maybe, maybe one thing. Yeah, if, okay. Go ahead. Sorry, if I can just add one last thing. You can still prompt with keywords, but you might have more luck doing it with multi-prompts. So that's just one thing. Okay, interesting. That, that's an advanced concept uh, to explore there. And again, um, he has a fantastic channel where he goes in depth on many of these concepts and many of the release notes, uh, including like all the different parameters that it takes, you can find like separate videos for all, all these parameters. And, and I certainly have been watching your videos and educating myself that way instead of, you know, just reading like a wall of text just because that's how I learn too. So yeah, uh, with that yeah. being said, let me let me switch gears here and let's look at some examples that I was able to, to generate over the weekend. And all of these uh, come from this, this chat GPT approach. So if you guys are not familiar, like prepare uh, to have your minds blown because like these outputs, they still, they still, still get me. And for example, okay, so this one, this is, this is something that would have been impossible. Can you see my screen right now? Well, that, that's a fair question. Huh? I, I guess you're following the stream, so you probably can, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh okay. my goodness. Yeah. Super okay. real. Huh? Super real. Yes. Yes. So this is, this is like something I would call the death of Instagram. Because every single thing that, that is going to be, people are just going to lose trust, right? People are just going to lose trust. Mm -hmm. All these pictures of the last years, you knew they were Photoshopped slightly. You knew they, they had the fancy new filters. All that is well and good. But if you, for me, in my mind, this really crosses a threshold of, wait, this beach doesn't exist. This girl doesn't exist. Not even this dress exists. Not even that sunset is real. Nothing about this is real. And I feel like once people start spamming these, it's just, you know, it's not going to be, it's, it's never going to be the same again. There's just no, there's just no way to go back. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think Instagram already has sort of a, um, Credibility issue, anyway. So <laughs> that is that is a good point. They were uh, they were struggling a little bit in the past already. Um, I'm just just uh, looking. Okay, so let's have a look at another example here, right? Let's let's look at something a little different. So this was the typical like Instagram thing. Okay, this is this is very similar actually. This is just I just went deeper on one of those. Again, it's so shocking to me. Like I could not tell. Like if I saw this on Instagram while scroll scrolling. On this one, it just looks 100% real to me. It's not even like 98%, you know? This just looks real to me. There's nothing you can, you know, the hand looks realistic enough. Her body proportions, everything about it is just a little too good for comfort. 
So, okay, so let's look at something else. I generated this one yesterday. So I went and, and all of these are created with the GPT-4 prompt generator. And what I what I did is I just fed this uh, view from space globe um, showing uh, lit up cities or something like that was my initial prompt. And then GPT-4 went ahead and, and you know, expanded on that, that terrible and simplistic description I just gave. And I got something like this. Again, photorealistic in my opinion. And if you look at my newest thumbnail, it's in the background. And I think it's a great background for a thumbnail, you know. But now we get like NASA space station pictures that are, you know, copyright free. <laughs> I mean, how, what the heck is happening? Anyway, so I, I thought these are really cool. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, so, so, so it's, it's the thing with the realism is that um, it's, it's really quite shocking. I've, I've heard some comments where people said, oh, well, but it's not, I, mean, I don't feel anything when I see the images. I mean, yeah, sure. Some of them are so real, but, but then there are others that are really, really, I think have lots of life, lots yeah. of emotion. Uh, I mean, the one that you just showed was beautiful. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, I believe the audio issue has returned. There's a, so it's not game changing. Mm. I still can perfectly understand you. There's just a little, little crackle with it. Um, but I agree. I, let's let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, honestly, um, I'm on. Uh, if if there's a spectrum between like AI critic that is like this is you know humanity is over and and this is soulless and what is this and ban it right away. And then the other side of it is is people that really embrace it and and use it and and see the upside for humanity in it too. Because certainly, l let me let me go on a little tangent here and tell you about a little story that I heard today, which I thought was super interesting. And that is the discussion between the, the typical educational discussion, right? Usually goes something like, hey, like AI is going to ruin schools and education and our youth uh, is going to, you know, miss, like develop all these habits that are not going to help them in real life. And, you know, they should ban it. You know, that, that's kind of the basic discussion. But then I, I heard an interesting counterpoint today. Like, okay, what if you create a scenario where you have a no devices classroom, that is disconnected from the internet and the teacher uses AI, only the teacher, right? So he's able to spin up all these examples and bring all this knowledge, uh, you know, and present it. Like maybe the AI is something like his brain su supplement and then he's just a mouthpiece for that. And he would present and teach in a way that, you know, without AI, it's, it's going to be hard to match. It's going to be hard to match, especially for new coming teachers, right? Maybe they don't have the experience on how to deal with kids. All of a sudden, you could just be like, hey, God, how do I interact with this problematic kid that, you know, throws his lunchbox at his um, other students or, or, or whatever. And then even in the in the teaching, you could come up with creative ways to, to approach um, these these sometimes very dry topics like mathematics, right? You could just be like, can you craft me a story that communicates this mathematical concept? And then you have a story prepared for your class. Or you could be like, can you craft an interactive game that my students could play? And then you can just do that. I think there the upside is like almost unlimited I, and, and for humanity, you know? So I think that's beautiful, but it takes a new approach. And and yes, transitioning from what we have now, where like all the kids are just like, you know, spent their class, like, uh, what is going on in there? Tra and transitioning to this like new model is not going to be easy, but I'm just saying there's like, there's, there's always an optimistic version too. And yeah, we like to explore those on this channel. Okay, with that being said, let's look at one more picture and generate some images here. So um, uh, this, is, this is the last one. So I'll switch my desktop. Okay, over here. And then if I move on over here, we get. I was quite stunned by like the because I used to do astrophotography as a as a hobby, just um, like with the cameras. I, I used to do astro time lapses uh, for fun. So I just went and created like these images of the sky, and it's just. Whew. So I believe it updated now, right? Can you can you see this? And there's more. I have I have, I created a bunch of these. Nice. This wasn't possible with uh, with nice. V4. This looks like a real you know panoramic picture that you could get from a DSLR. There's, oh, this is a, a bad example. <laughs> this is an example of something you get when you type in two to three keywords. That's what I found. This was like analytics exploding, you know, uh, I think that was my prompt here. <laughs> this is what I got. But then if you use GPT-4, you can, you can get <laughs> stuff like this. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, I, be I believe you're like you're like three seconds behind on the video stream, which shouldn't be a problem though. But yeah, this this I I got with the GPT four prompt. Um, so yeah, audio has been fixed. That's fantastic. And I, I think it's time to Good. move into generating some stuff here. What do you think? Yeah, let's let's go. I mean, perfect. Then let me see if Chat GPT four is up. Otherwise, we'll have to freestyle this because it has been down most of this day, even GPT four. Um, so let's see. I believe it actually might be down. So there goes my plan. Okay. That was really frustrating this morning. I, I was using it and then it crashed. Hmm. I actually just got a DM from a fellow community member in the Discord. And he, he said he was doing this webinar today where he was relying on Chat GPT, like he was presenting about Chat GPT. Uh, and it just it just didn't work. It was like all the people were there. It's like, well, too bad. Next time, maybe. It's still down. It's still down. Okay, so I, I have a plan B, though. I have a plan B. So just to recap, just to recap um, what the video, you, you can check the video out on my channel, but essentially what it suggests is this prompt uh, where you turn GPT-4 into a stable diffusion um, uh, prompt generator, photography prompt generator. And if you p copy paste it in here, uh, what you get is um, you get to type in like two keywords, like let's say, you know, like earth space view. And then you add the prompt before that. And what you get is output, like the one I'm about to show you. I have, I have some a backup plan prepared, you know, so it's all good. I think we can do this. This looks good. And what you get is output like this. So right now I'm sharing my screen. And this is kind of the prompt you get. So I'll just read it and maybe let's discuss it. You'll see it on screen here in a second too. So, okay. So capture an ethereal image of a cosmic spiral featuring swirling hues of blue, purples, and golds against the backdrop of the vast star-studded cosmos. Well, let me just tell you, that's not a sentence I would naturally use. <laughs> Using a Zeiss Distagon uh, T2.8 15mm lens, set your camera on a sturdy tripod and focus on capturing the intricate details of the celestial phenomenon. Utilize a long exposure technique to enhance the vibrant colors and emphasize the spiraling motion of the cosmic spectacle. And so on. So that's like one third of the prompt. Um, and, and here we have the results. What do you think about this prompt? Do you have any feedback or anything you would do different here? So um, one of the mods in my Discord, Danner, he's been doing a lot of testing. And so one of the things that he's found is that there's a massive drop-off in the effectiveness of these long prompts after about 77 tokens, okay. right? So, so we don't even know whether all of the, your text is being used. So I, I, I would argue this might be a, maybe a bit too much, but in the end, it doesn't really matter as long as you're getting the right outcome. Um, yes. But... Uh, okay, very, very good point. Um, so, okay, just I'll, I'll just... You know, I'll just say it, the audio issue resurfaced a little bit. So I don't know if you can maybe replug something, but no worries, no worries. I understood you perfectly. So it, this is what I would say. Um, I found something very similar. I am glad you said it out loud like this. Um, what the GPT-4 output gets you is uh, free paragraphs usually. And this is this is one of the tips I wanted to communicate in today's live stream. So any everybody tuning in, you know, um, good on you because because you're about to learn something. So. It gives you, it usually gives this three paragraphs, right? And I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll just solo myself meanwhile. And what I usually do is I cherry pick. So I found the same thing. If I just copy paste the three paragraphs, for example, in the video, you can see I copied everything, including like include, um, what was it? Volumetric lighting in the background with light rays coming in through a window in the back. And it just completely ignored that part of the prompt. That is exactly because it's, it's too long. So um, what I do is I copy usually the first paragraph and then my favorite part from like the third paragraph. And, and that's how I use the prompt. Now, we could go ahead and upgrade the prompt by saying, you know, limit it to 70 tokens. Or maybe which should, you know, in practice, maybe that should um, be somewhere around maybe... Yeah, I think you can use 70 words plus minus. I know it's not the same. 
Uh, sometimes it splits the words into into multiple tokens and stuff. But if you say a maximum of 70 words, it would improve our prompt. Would you agree? I added you back in. Would you agree? So should I should I should I add a parameter um to my prompt that says you know limits your output to 70 words? Yeah, I think you're muted. I think you're muted. I think you're muted. No worries, no worries, no worries, no worries. There we go. Exploring live content with Igor and Christian. <laughs> Thanks for the patience, guys. It's all good. We're learning together. That's what this is about. So, how about now? Um, hmm. I believe, I believe you're still muted. I'm not getting a signal here. Okay. So yeah, it, it sounds like, okay, so w let's test this hypothesis meanwhile, okay? Let's test this hypothesis of shorter prompts uh, being better. So if you said uh, 70 tokens, then I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the first three lines here and let's compare the output. So this is the first generation, uh, live generation on this channel in Midjourney V5, Midjourney V5. So join us while we do this. Uh, I'm just gonna say imagine. And actually, yes, all my settings are correct. So I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna say imagine and we're gonna copy the first part here. Then we're gonna compare the output, okay? So this is um, output number one. And then I'm just going to use the first part and add a R16 to 9 to keep the aspect ratio the way I want it. Okay, so now it's generating. <laughs> okay, try to generate QR codes with Midjourney and see where it leads. I don't know, that seems like a... That's, it seems like it can't even do text. How is it supposed to be able to do QR codes? Something it sounds like a fun one to try, actually. Okay, how about now? I don't know. It seems that you're muted. I'm not. I'm not sure. Not sure what's going on. How about now? okay? Just you know, just try speaking. Once I hear you, I'll let you know. Meanwhile, I'll you know do these do these these prompts. So okay. So right here, it's generating. It takes a bit of time. That's one thing I'll say about V5. It takes longer um, than V4 it took. But if you get the pro plan, which I do have here, uh, you get you know various settings that help you with this problem. So if I go into slash settings, um, uh, this very convenient menu that surprisingly a lot of people don't know about. This is like one of my tips here, definitely. You can pick your version. And you can also uh, switch it to relaxed mode if you want to save um, some of your, you know, generations. Like you're going to be able to generate more images. It's just going to take longer. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the result here. Very different. Very different. So I believe your microphone works again. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. We got it. We got Are it. You? We got it. There you go. You, Welcome uh, back. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, dude, like, this is horrible. I can't believe it. I, I think somebody made the comment that said he's a computer wizard, but can't figure out the mic. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> I it. I thought that one was, I thought that one, wait, <laughs> let's, let's add that one to the broadcast. I thought that one was so funny. I, I just like, I was like, isn't that like a little rude? Oh. I don't want to read that out loud. I thought that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It was spot on. It was spot on. That that's kind of funny, but that's usually the case, you know. The 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 accountants have the worst like personal finances of them all, you know. It's just how it goes. It is what uh, it is. Yeah. So I so I think you had a question earlier that I wasn't able to respond to. Yes, so yes, yes. Okay, about so limiting the limiting, tokens, yes. right? Yes, 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 yes. So would you would you add to yeah, the yeah. prompts that I presented? You know, like limit your output to uh, let's say 70 words well i i think i think that you know how chat uh, gpt is basically capable of giving me a, a more concise um block of text i think that that might make sense because otherwise you might be i mean people might think that longer text helps when it actually doesn't do much so at I, least having the option probably would help yeah so, so what I did find, I can tell you from my testing, 
as I said, when I ran the GPT-4 prompt, which unfortunately doesn't work right now, but when I ran it, I usually got like three paragraphs like this, like I just showed. That was one mm. of them. So extremely long text, like like almost a thousand tokens, right? And what I usually did is I, you know, cut down 70% of that and, and cherry picked the best parts. And then um, what I also did is I ran it a lot of times. So I did a bunch of like testing. And what I found is that it sometimes does venture into like the deep end of your prompt. And sometimes it does pick the volumetric lighting that is, you know, token 300 or something. But um, not all of the time. So I guess if you really want optimal results, my recommendation would be just hit that little, you know, refresh button like 10 to 20 times and you're going to get everything that is in, you're going to get a lot of variety from long prompts. And that's why I think the video is still valuable. But I'll say this. What we did for the entire channel, we actually upgraded every or we updated every single video's description with every single prompt that is used inside of that video. So people can now go back and they can simply copy paste all the prompts. And what I do now is whenever I improve one of my prompts, because I have like a go-to library by now, right? Like I started with the ebook in like December, but and by now it, I have like a personal library. And Whenever I update something in there and I remember that it has been used in a video before, I also update the video's description. So that's the same thing I'm going to be doing here. You know, if you get a video on, you know, how to use GPT-4 for Midjourney two days after the release of Midjourney, I'm going to, you know, take the freedom and go into that description and update it. And I think that's a good idea. The video content will be slightly different, but then when you go to the description, just know for all of you like return viewers, just always copy paste from the description and you're going to get uh, the best version of that prompt I know of right now. So that's just my approach that I wanted to share. Um, so interesting stuff. So I think a lot to be experimented with, but let's look at the example right here because the generation is done. So as outlined before, uh, we shortened the prompt, right? The, the prompt before this was about three times as long and included a lot of additional detail. Now, when comparing these two, okay, I'll just I'll just put them like side by side right here. <laughs> I would say the the difference is significant. I mean, look at that. That's not even close. One of these four is a spiral, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, I it. There's no clear like. Where, where, where did sorry? Where did you add the spell? Because I was had to delay in the video just for a second. Okay, so um, ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, now, yeah. Now you can see it. Okay, 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 okay. Well, generally speaking, that the, see as even though longer prompts are useful, for example, in version five. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, there is a limit. There's always a limit. And the more you try to stuff in, the more you dilute other aspects of your prompt as well. Yes. So I think it's it, 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 it kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you want to get a really, really specific outcome, then I think a longer but not too long prompt is always good. But but if you if if you don't really care, then you can experiment yeah. around as much as you want, just like you said, and just re-roll and re-roll. Yeah, in, interesting. Until you drop and, dead. And I think that's, that's really the best practice here because uh, look, you're especially from these newer models that want these long prompts. You're not going to get optimal results if you just run it once. That's really what I found. They're they're so deep and they have so many options and there's so much going on under the hood. Let me tell you, there's so much going on under the hood that not even the researchers at OpenAI know what, what is happening there in many of the cases. Like if you listen to podcasts with Andre Karpathy, which uh, was the head of AI at Tesla over the past few years and now um, re-entered OpenAI again to work there. Even he states multiple times that people don't really understand how, even the researchers don't really understand how these neural nets operate. They understand how they're trained. They understand, uh, they understand the, the fine-tuning. They understand like 
a lot of the backend, but they do not understand how these neural nets operate at a fundamental level. There's somewhat of a, a black box that you, you know, you just train with all the data and people make all these comparisons to, you know, they're just like human brains. But then look, not even the most advanced like neuroscientists un fully understand the brain. So it's kind of, it's kind of that same territory where literally we ventured out into the open sea on a ship and we're, we're kind of just like exploring and seeing what we get. And that's, that's, you have to adopt that, this, uh, that explorer mindset here, because if you're just going to go in and run one or two prompts and expect to get exactly what you want, well, I have bad news for you. That's, that's just not gonna, that's just not gonna work. Um, you're going to need to go back and forth. You're going to need to refine your prompts. And really what I want to communicate from this stream is, is the GPT-4 prompt generator that I presented it's a starting point. It's where you begin. It's where you take parts of it and use it for your own description. And then you rerun it multiple times. So I think Christian made a bunch of excellent points here. So one, just to rehash, one would be, you know, keep them shorter. Um, try or like experiment with keeping them shorter. Midjourney ignores your inputs after a certain uh, length of prompts. But then again, as I said, um, if you run it 20 times, you're going to find that it like explores different parts of that prompt and you might get the results you want. You just have to run it a lot. So if you want, if, if you want reliable generations, then uh, make them shorter. Um, and otherwise you're kind of going to be, you know, throwing, uh, you're going to be throwing darts and, and, uh, blindly and hoping for the best, but these complex natural language descriptions are just a better starting point than giving it, you know, some like half a sentence. Anyway, um, I want, let's generate something together. So it, it's a little bit of a shame that, uh, GPT-4 doesn't work right now, but you know, we can, we can work around that. And we've been around the block. We've generated some images before. Um, yeah, so GPT-4 is temporarily unavailable. What, what do you make of this? Let's, let's generate something together. Um, and maybe we can craft uh, a prompt together. I think that would be some fun. Are you down? Sure, 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 absolutely. Okay. So, so what do we want to do? Do we want to do more of a you know, like a generic landscape thing or like a specific object. Um, like w one thing that I personally really, really like to do okay. is I like to combine uh, like things that we know from daily life, but then I add in a, a really random element. Like let's say, for example, oh. I once created these houses which had holes like Swiss cheese. And so you can use like Swiss cheese shaped uh, or Swiss cheese shaped or organically shaped structures and stuff like that. And gives you really, really interesting outcomes. That's, that's amazing. Okay. I love it. So how about this? Let's do a collaborative thing. Okay. Where it's not just the two of us, but also chat coming in. So guys here, okay. let me, let me cool. ask you, give me a bunch of suggestions for real world objects and we're going to pick two. And then we're going to try remixing them with V5 and we're going to, we're going to do our best to, to generate this. And that's going to be, that's going to be the content here. We're going to be, be making Swiss cheese houses or something of the sort. Uh, so go ahead, go ahead and post your, uh, post your, um, suggestions in the chat. We're going to highlight them and then we're going to craft a prompt. So while they post, um, uh, do you feel like, um, we can get like some framework going here, some base prompt layout? where we just like switch out the two words. Yeah. So are we working? So just, are we working on V4 or V5 here? I think let's do V5. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if we're doing V5, one of the things that I've realized today is that, um, and this is, this can be important for a lot of people who've been struggling. Um, if you just put in your subject, then you're going to get realism. And then I think what a lot of people have been doing in the past is that they've been adding their styling at the end of the prompt. Yes. Now, what I did today is I switched it around. At the beginning of my prompt, I defined the type of style that I want, and only then I moved to the subject, and that worked much, much better. Okay. So, okay. Interesting. So, so, so let's think about the style that we want first. Okay. All right. All right. That sounds that sounds perfect. So, um, I think let's go with a photo. Let, let's go with the biggest strength of V five here, which is photorealism, right? 
Okay. Let's let's create something that looks as close to real life as possible. So maybe I'll start off by giving a little tip that you uh, surely know. But um, a lot of people in V4, and, and they brought this up during um, the, the community hours and the notes, a lot of people used these keywords that induced hyperrealism, just like hyperrealism, HK, Octane, Render, uh, what was another one, Unreal Engine. And those make your results less realistic now. Because if you include that, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna create a Unreal Engine scene, which essentially is a, a game engine. So it's gonna look more like a game and less like real life. Okay, so that's something not to do. What what should we do here to get realism from Midjourney V5? Well, if you, I think the classic thing is to start off, if we're going to do photography, pick your type of photography. So is it going to be interior design? Is it going to be sort of editorial? Or is it going to be architecture uh, photography? That sort of thing. Okay. So I think let's try product photography. I, that, that was just what popped into my mind. Seeing some of these uh, suggestions here, a hammer, hammer made of glass, a whale on the streets yeah. of New York, marble statue, Okay, I'll, I won't read that one. Chat GPT owes you 67 cents for being down today. Okay, that's not a prompt. <laughs> what the heck? Gingerbread mansion. That's that's the one I kind of like here. So I think a lot of these are going to be, you know, either that would be architectural photography, but I think product photography is perfect. So let's let's start by crafting um, a nice product photograph here. I'll be your keyboard here. You just tell me what to type what, and I can help out. So... Okay, so let's start. Okay, start off with product photography, and then you can add a comma just for some structure. Okay. And then let's use. Uh, I need to pick a word here because there's so many good words in here in the chat. <laughs> let's use a. Hmm. There's so much good stuff. Yeah, there's 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 almost too much because I'm not sure about the organs okay. piece. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I did. That, that we won't do that one. Yeah, the the, the sound issue so returned a little bit, but but um, I think we can. I, I really love I love gingerbread. I, I I don't know why. It's just gingerbread just resonated with me. Maybe because I'm slightly hungry, um, or. How about how about like combining New York with gingerbread? Like you know, like a gingerbread in New York, that wouldn't be pro product photography. But but that's an interesting one. A miniature civilization in a bottle. That would be really cool too. Um, we have a computer mouse. We have cheese. <laughs> a hammer made of glass. Yeah, no worries. We got we got this chat taken care of, guys. We have moderators here. Isn't this incredible? Thanks, Daniel. Um, okay, okay. So let's just pick two. Let's just pick two. So I think one of them. Uh, let's go with. Um, I think a computer mouse would be a good one for product photography. So let's okay. Let's pick a computer mouse. That is a good starting point. Okay, and then. Okay, and then we can pick a second one. So a computer mouse, we, we had New York, we had gingerbread. How about a gingerbread computer mouse? I think that's kind of a that's kind of a good idea. But then use but then use gingerbread ginger ginger texture. texture. Okay. Um I, I'm not sure what the I'm audio is better, and I really apologize, guys. Apologize. Um, yeah, um, it keeps returning. It keeps returning. I I wonder I wonder what what it uh, what's causing it, but eventually that's thought it, it will clear. I thought, I, thought I, I thought if yeah, I thought if I switched yeah, to my regular headphones that it would be fixed, but it's, it's really weird. It's usually no, these work. No, usually I, these work fine. Maybe maybe it's it's um it's some sound. Yeah, I I really don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> yes, it is, guys. Uh, just bear with us with the sound problem here. We'll, we'll uh, start generating right now. Okay, I think I think um, we can switch to the desktop here, and we can do this right now. So, okay, I started with product photography, comma. 
How do we continue this? We're going to do a gingerbread computer mouse. Yeah, but okay, okay, so, so write okay, gingerbread, so write gingerbread dash, dash, textured, dash textured, textured, dash, mouse, texture, mouse. texture as in, texture as in, texture as in, with the D at the end, D at the end, gingerbread textured mouse. mouse, textured mouse. Okay, with a dash in between gingerbread and textured. Yeah, because it's, yeah, because it's, yeah, because we, we're not just a scrum out of texture, we're saying that gingerbread is textured, gingerbread textured mouse. Textured mouse. Okay, listen, on, listen, on the, top, the, top. the audio problem is actually quite bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's here. So, listen, I, I have an idea. You, you can send, send these to me via Discord chat and I'll just copy it in and I'll talk over it. And you can see if we fix it, I, I don't think uh, there's a point in, you know, trying to break through it. It's really, there's an echo, it's robotic, it's, it's, we can just use this workaround and, and use his extensive knowledge of mid-journey by interfacing with him like we would interface with AI, okay? We're going to have, I'm going to keep our camera on here, but you're going to be muted and we're just going to have you, you can even type it into YouTube chat. You can type the prompt into YouTube. I think that would be the best thing the most interactive thing and then i'll just you know I'll, I'll take the prompt that we craft here so we made it this far guys um we're gonna make this happen i, I want to see a gingerbread textured mouse that looks as if you know my grandma baked it so yeah it's not about the call um nova it's it's uh an audio issue um a hardware audio issue so let's see okay so i have product photography uh gingerbread textured mouse okay there you go okay amazing so christian is in the chat um i'm gonna copy paste this okay and now um do we run with this prompt or do we add anything else and as you can see there's a there's this natural language component that I, we've been talking about like it's not all just commas and keywords Okay. There we go. Perfect. Going to add some more fun stuff. Okay, perfect. So meanwhile, meanwhile, we're just going to run this and we're going to do an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 just because it looks great on video. Okay. So that's generating. So, you know, buckle in, buckle up, you guys. This is going to be done very, very soon here. Uh, and then we're going to try some more variations. So, yeah, Christian, feel free to, um, <laughs> Daniel, with the comment of the day, imagine a working stream setup with quality sound system. Unbreakable. <laughs> We're going to run that one too, just because why not? <laughs> nice. So we're generating two of these images in Midjourney V5. Uh, can't wait for the results. And yeah, so we have... So this was going to be about GPT-4 as a prompt generator, but turns out this is going to be about, you know, tokenized AI as a prompt generator. This is great. <laughs> All right. So I'm starting to see gingerbread textured mouse. Aha. Christian, we made a, a mistake. We forgot to add one word to our prompt. It's a gingerbread textured mouse. <laughs> we forgot the computer mouse. So, you know. <laughs> Let's do that again. Let's do that again. That's actually kind of funny. Let's do this. Again, guys, for all you newcomers, this is Midjourney V5. We have a guest in the house, Christian from Tokenized AI. has some fantastic Midjourney content. Go check out his channel for more. I promise everything on his channel is in like stellar quality, which is if like a live audio issue happening here. So we're working around it, but wow. Okay. There, there you go. We actually have some results here. We actually have some results and look, you, you I mean, you can feel free to uh, activate your audio at any point in time. Maybe it works, maybe not, but this is really good. Look at, I, I love this. I love this. I, I don't know about you guys, but this is so adorable. Wow, this is this is something, yeah. Wow, and, and now I can really see the power of uh, you know the pro product photography keywords that you started this off with. Um, incredible stuff, honestly. I really like this results. What do you guys think? This is a good one. It's not a computer mouse. 
That is, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I really enjoy these results though. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Christian, Christian, by the way, here, uh, th this is what a working stream setup with quality sound uh, looks like. Unbreakable. This, this one is for you. <laughs> anyway, this is this does a really good job. I mean, uh, yeah, there's a DJ setup. The thing is, none of this gear is actual gear, right? This is this is all kind of made up. That's what I found with technical stuff. It's just you know creates this like abstract um, equipment, but. So let's let's refine our prompt here. So let's add computer mouse. Let's add a computer mouse. And you provided us with another prompt here. So we're gonna run that too shortly. <laughs> Gingerbread textured computer mouse. Okay, all right, let's do this. We'll run this one. And then we'll also take yours from chat. Imagine product photography, gingerbread textured mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill surrounded by an army of Siamese cats. I love it. I love it. That's that's actually great. Okay. Are we going to do mouse or computer mouse? What do what do you think? Um which one of the two should we do? Mouse or computer mouse? I think here mouse would make more sense, yeah. A lush green hill. I think yeah. Let's just run it the way you wrote it. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's do mouse. Okay, we're generating a gingerbread textured mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill surrounded by an army of Siamese cats. Okay, and guys, this is how you would go about this if you were to craft your prompts yourself, right? The, the approach I suggested was um, going with was was using the GPT-4 output, but this is how you would this is how you would do it from scratch. So I'm glad we're actually doing this. As you can see, we start with the style, and then uh, we add the prompt that exactly describes what we want to generate here. Okay, it's happening. It's happening. We have we have a bunch of images that are being created here. Do you maybe want to test the audio one more time? You know, because it worked like 70% of the time. You can always just give it a test, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, whatever. We continue like this. Ooh. Oh, you're muted, right? Oh, wait, I muted my guest. Muted you. Didn't mean to mute you. So now it should be working. Try. Yeah, it's still robotic. It's still, we still have that, that issue. Okay. Okay, anyway, okay, so first of all, we have the <laughs> gingerbread textured computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill. I mean, how cool is that? Look at this gingerbread. This is insane. Somebody make this. I'll buy one. I want a gingerbread mouse too. This, this texture looks actually extremely comfortable to use. I mean, quite cool. I, I want more. I want more of, you know, the first here. I want more variations. Hello? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, my audio is still not working. Yeah, so it all... Can you guys hear me in the, in the stream? Does it all work? Something happened here. Yeah, what do you guys think of this? But, but add the cat army. Okay, okay, so that's a good idea. So let's go ahead and add the cat army to this. So let me copy your prompt here. Is that still generating? Ah, no, it's down here. Yeah, let's do the gingerbread, gingerbread mouse, computer mouse, plus the cat army. Whoop. Okay, it, it all works. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then it's it's just a headphone thing. Ah, this is. Is it better now? We'll manage. We'll Can manage. you hear me now? So gingerbread textured computer mouse. Hmm. All right. Really sorry about the audio. Yeah. Okay, let's generate this one. So, product photography, gingerbread textured computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill surrounded by an army of Siamese cats. Siamese? I, I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Okay, ooh, look at this. I think I'm about to launch my brand new, you know, product on Amazon. The gingerbread mouse. This is great. 
And you know what the marketing would for this would look like? The, like the packaging would be like a grandma, like a obviously AI generated grandma holding it up and looking at it as if it, you know, was her engagement ring or something. Um, I think that would make, you know, like a nice vintage style to the packaging with a grandma as the as kind of the leading character. I think this would make for a great product. Let's see what else we got here. So while the new one generates, um, I'll try and reset my headphones because those stopped working too. <laughs> and then we, okay, we can look at, okay. <laughs> Everything is made out of gingerbread. Wow, Christian, thank you so much for revealing this incredible keyword here. Um, uh, the, so to recap, what you did here is you included gingerbread textured. And that kind of makes everything gingerbread textured. How cool is this? Wow. Let's see. This is this is really great. I don't yeah, there's a bunch of cats, but we didn't really I guess here we have a bunch of mice. Here we have a bunch of mice. It's not really the result that we hoped for, I believe. So my headphones work again. That's great. Ooh. How about this? 100-year-old grandma deadlifting 500 pounds in the gym. Then, I, I don't know where you got that from, but I'm just going to quickly run that. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, 500-year-old grandma de <laughs> deadlifting 500 pounds in the gym. I'll just, you know... I don't, I don't know why, I'll, but, but I felt like running this one. So we'll do this. Meanwhile, we can review this one. Yeah, the texture prompt is an excellent one to remember. I think I can hear you and it works. Can you hear me now? Yes, and it sounds good too. Is the audio really better or not? No, it's, I'm not sure. It's excellent right now. It's excellent right now. Okay. Thank goodness. My goodness. Oh, we made it. Guys, we didn't even lose like viewers. Like you guys are loyal. Love you guys. That's really much appreciated. Battling through these audio issues, but now yep. we're here. So let's talk. Let's talk business. Let's talk Mid Journey 5. Okay. So what do we have now? I, I didn't have time to look at the picture. Okay. So <laughs> we have product photography, gingerbread textured computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill surrounded by an army of Siamese cats. And we right. got this. So did the, how did the Siamese cats come out? So... I'm not familiar with cat terminology, so I, I have to admit my ignorance, and, and I wouldn't know what a Siamese cat looks like. Is it like the the is it like the Faroe cats? Is it like kind of those? I, I don't know. Please enlighten me. It's well, Siamese cats would normally have that sort of um, beige colored sort of fur, but then I think around the eyes they have a dark, dark almost blackish color. Okay. Um, so I believe But uh, if we don't see them then Yeah, I believe that's not the case in this picture. I believe uh, we have a bad. bunch of we have a bunch of I really like the second one. I really enjoy the second one. This is a really cool one. But there's no mice in there. I, I guess over here. So th there's a few obvious issues. Um can we troubleshoot this somehow? So let's see. So we said product photography. I think it killed that. Perfect. This is like the perfect product photography setup. That works really well. Then we have gingerbread textured computer mouse we couldn't ask for anything better it's a computer mouse it's gingerbread textured and it's extremely creative i really like the approach here and then sitting on top of a lush green hill surrounded by an army of siamese cats it seemed to have missed the uh, breed of the cat and it seemed to have missed that setting where you know the, the computer mouse is sitting on top of the hill Hmm. And because uh, I'm imagining something like the cat's below the hill and then the mouse is kind of like scared on top. Okay, so what we can do is we can, let's ignore the Siamese part because okay. maybe that's just something that Midjourney isn't interpreting properly. So, but let's try to keep the cats. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, we got this. <laughs> a true gem. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, sorry. That was a little... <laughs> Tour. <laughs> but yeah, Mid Journey V5 can do that too, you guys. No, no worries. Um so so what I would like what I would maybe try to do, because so we're already in the in the gingerbread sort of theme. Yes. So what you might want to do is remove the Siamese. 
done. Okay, perfect. And then what we'll do is add a add two colons at the end of that prompt. Okay. So we're going to make that a first segment. And then we're going to add a second segment. We're going to do some multi-prompting here. Okay. And we're not going to do multi-prompting the way that some of the people in the official Midjourney Discord would suggest, because multi-prompts are useful for many different things. But in this case, we're just going to use it in order to sparkle some theme, some mood, some atmosphere on top of it. So, so add those two colons. Did you add them? Yes. They're, they're, um, I'm switching. Oh, sorry, it's the just the delay. On. Sorry. Yes. And then what we'll add is, because I find that quite frightening. So we'll do a Hensel and Gretel theme. OK, how do I write that in English? Because I certainly would know in German with A and everything. That's, but like, I, Yeah, it's a good good question. Um, is it H-E-N-S-E-L? I actually, I'm not sure. I mean, us being able to, I mean, us speaking German, you know, yeah. It's kind of weird writing it in English now. Yeah. Hens <laughs> Let I, me see I, how, how what Google says. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Hensel and Hensel and yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. So they just they just take away the the umlaut. Okay. So I'm just gonna paste it in the perfect. Um, perfect. the chat for clarity. Okay. And yes. now what we're gonna do is we're only gonna add half a waiting. Okay, it's yeah, okay, it's Han Hansel. Okay. Perfect. And for our now, newcomers here, could you could you briefly uh, give us a rundown of weights? Yeah. yeah. So what we're doing here right now is we're turning our regular prompt into a multi-prompt. And what you can usually do with multi-prompts is that let's say you're trying to place two two um, different characters next to each other, like a dog and a cat. Very often that will blend. Yes. But if you if you use multi-prompts, you can repeat the same sort of concept, but with different words. And very often that will reinforce what you're actually trying to do. So instead of you ending up with like a blended creature that is neither cat nor dog, yeah. Um, Midjourney sometimes interprets that better. But what we're doing here is we're simply going to infuse a little bit of an, an additional concept on top of it. And, and because we have a second segment, we can add something that's called a weight. Right? And we're going to just add a weight 0 0.5 just to be careful, because otherwise, who knows what it will turn into. Um. Yeah, yeah. Um. Perfect. OK. So. I think that's a fantastic summary. I would say uh, weights are one of the first uh, topics I would look into um, after like my first after my initial day with Midjourney. So if you're new to this and you're just like getting your feet wet, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but if you're trying to take the next step on becoming advanced, I think weights are like the number one thing you should be looking at. Uh, just because, as you outlined, they can be super useful and they allow you to tackle certain situations which are not solvable any other way in here. So with that being said, uh, I think let's just run this one. I think this one is ready to go. So let me just hit enter. I could have could have done that a while ago, but um, better late than ever. And and hey, another another fantastic uh, prompt from, from Daniel here. We can run that in parallel because why not? <laughs> so okay that, that's kind of a funny a movie scene gingerbread textured grandma using gingerbread textured mouse to post about her weightlifting career on a computer system with a perfect sound system okay that's just that's just gonna be a fun one for in between but i'm really curious on um our result here already we can see this is this is shaping up up quite well so hansel and gretel theme yes 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 this is more Okay, we certainly have the hill. I don't see the computer mouse yet. Let's see if it included that. Interesting. So it's it seems like it's generating this gingerbread house that lives on this island. Um, let's see. There is a mouse. There is no computer mouse, though. I'll say that. And there's no army of cats. Interesting. Oh, and then, <laughs> and then we have this monstrosity shaping up here. All right, all right. Okay, okay. So beautiful image. Just first of all, like, like really, like, if you're trying to generate product photography, 
I think I think it's gonna be very hard to make a case um for you know spending like three four thousand dollars on a on a studio shoot unless you know your product is like I don't know if you're just looking for product pictures uh, for marketing purposes and not to promote your your like own product that you developed. I think it's gonna be very hard to uh, to um, you know reason the cost of a photographer when I when I see results like this. Like this is ridiculously good, but it's not what we asked for. So so what do you make? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have run these funny prompts in between. But this is just that, what is this? I, I think I'll add this this one to my personal like collection of favorites. Thanks, thanks for this fantastic prompt, Daniel. This is this is great. But let's talk about let, let's talk about our prompt here. So, so I mean, so, I mean, is, is that a computer mouse that in front of one of the doors? Of the doors? Sorry. Ah, sorry. Oh, my ears. <laughs> my good lord, um, something um, is going on. So a okay, computer just, mouse in okay. front of one of the door. Yes, actually, very good eye, very good eye right there. Um, this is this seems to be a computer mouse. Also here I see elements of a computer mouse. So it definitely didn't ignore it. It didn't ignore it. It's just not represented the way we would like it to be represented. What about rearranging the wor words? I think that's a good point. Christian, tell me in chat, what do you think about rearranging the words? Maybe we could switch things up and put Hansel and Gretel theme. No, but, but it did that well. That's fine. Maybe we should put surrounded by an army of cats earlier. How about that? Let's just try that. I'm not sure. Audio is perfect again. Is it perfect? Because that's weird. Because this is coming straight from my MacBook now. Okay, so... It doesn't, it, it sounds, uh, it's a li little lower quality, but there's no crackling and I hear you perfectly and it does the job. So I think this is our solution. And so what I would suggest is first of all, reduce the weight to 0 0.25 because clearly it's too strong. Okay. Okay. Um, it's definitely too strong because nice. we can, we can see it's like, it's a bit too much. Yes. Um, I agree. Okay. So that's, that's beautiful. Uh, and maybe let's try moving this surrounded by an army of cats a little. Um, is it going to help if we move it over here? Let me ask you that. Sorry, I just saw Daniel's comment that this made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a human after all. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. We have this running, uh, we have this running uh, gag going on in the Discord server. Where people join and they use like chat GPT generated text to introduce themselves, right? To make like a, a like a good impression. And we included uh, a bot function. Daniel included a bot function where you can just be like slash uh, test for humanity or I, I don't know the, the command by heart. But you can you essentially give the person and then you link the person and you give them 60 seconds to uh, f fill out a captcha phrase to prove that they're human. Otherwise, they get timed out or something. So <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. Um, so anyway. I think what we what we might want to do in this prompt here, because I I, I see I think we should okay. be drifted off a little bit. Yeah. So we we might be able to do is so let's switch it around. So instead of texturing the mouse with the gingerbread texture, let's do it the other way around. Let's create instead a gingerbread house shaped like a mouse. Maybe that will give us okay. Okay, but like so a, a gingerbread house textured like uh no not textured not textured oh. um oh, the problem is i don't have a prompt in front of me right now let me see okay so let's use a computer mouse shaped gingerbread house maybe that okay. works i don't know Computer. You see, the mouse. thing about prompting is it's it's lots of trial and error anyway, all this the time. Is, and this is the main point of these streams. Like I, I love that we're not getting it right away because this is what I try to communicate. Like you, all of these people want to become like prompt engineers or better at prompting ChatGPT in my journey, but they're not ready to sit here and go through uh, sixty iterations of a prompt to get a result. Guys, how do you think I put that book together? Like. Uh, do you realize how many tries it takes on like one prompt to get it just the way you want it? Like it took a minute. All right. 
Um, and you just have to accept that. That's fine. You have to get over it. For me, with that book, I kind of got over the hurdle of, of uh, that mental block of, ooh, like, but what if I don't get it right right away? It doesn't matter. The beautiful thing here is, you know, even with ChatGPT, you just get to try another 200 times. That's what it is about. Or you watch our videos and you just copy paste. You can do that too. But if you're trying to like, you know, go further, then you're going to have to exp experiment like we're doing here. So I'm glad we get to do this live together with the audience here. Um, okay, so sorry, I digressed. Computer mouse shaped. Um... No, the other way. Um I'm getting confused myself yeah, yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let, let's concentrate here on, on this prompt. So computer mouse shaped gingerbread house. No, no, not shaped. So the thing is, the question is, what is the core product that we want to actually create? Do we want to create a product that is uh, more that looks like a computer mouse or do we want to create um, like what is the, the, okay. the key subject? Okay, right? okay. I would like a computer mouse to sit on top of uh, a hill. Yeah. And with with cats around it. Okay, so then let's remove the 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 second segment because I think that's introducing too much um, randomness. Okay. So we'll stick to just one segment and and not do multi pounds. Okay. And then. And then. So product photography obviously works. Then computer mouse obviously works too. Right. This is how I would think yeah. about it. Then um, computer mouse shaped gingerbread house. I'll just delete the gingerbread house part. Computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill. Okay. I think it has a problem with sitting on top of because um, it didn't really, you know, the proportions and the placement here wasn't right. Although here, maybe we need to add to the hill. I would make the... Uh, hill more dominant in the scene because this is more like a road. Uh, this is like a bump in the road, not like a hill. On top of a lush green mountain. How about that? Maybe maybe that can do the trick. Uh, I think I think you you might get like alpine scenery if you do that. I, but yeah. let's have a look. Yeah, let, let's try this out. Let's try this out. Surrounded, um, and and let's go into more detail. So at the bottom of the mountain um an army of cats is surrounding the you know surrounding the computer mouse mm -hmm. mm, that, no, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't feel right at the bottom of the mount, I I wanna give uh, I wanna be more specific on the location of the cats though, because it always just plays them all over the all over the scene. All and... over the scene, yeah. So the thing is, the tricky thing is there since there's a slight delay between the stream and us talking, um, I actually have trouble following exactly what the prompt looks like right now. But okay, so okay. so I haven't changed anything in in like a good fifteen seconds now. So. So what I see is so product product photography computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green mountain at the bottom of the mountain an army of cats is surrounding okay and that's where you stopped okay yes. so so this is a way, type of uh, sort of a prompt where I'm not always 100% sure whether midjourney actually gets this um, because basically what you're doing is you're adding two separate statements right yes and I personally have sometimes had trouble getting that to work, but you know, we can try that out nevertheless. So at the bottom of the mountain, an army of cats hmm, surrounding. I like the suggestion from the chat here. How about surrounding the mountain is, a, is an army of cats? We can try that. Because um, I, I like this. From my experience, I would say uh, simpler and more concise approaches that, that you know, express the same uh, meaning uh, are, are better. Well, how about this then? Um, mountain encircled, encircled by an army of cats. Okay, that's that's beautiful. Because it's true, surrounded doesn't necessarily mean that they're in like a circular shape, but they could literally yeah. be all over the place. So yes. maybe encircled. 
and and I love this. I hope you guys are picking up on some of the subtext in, in between our communication here. You know, like the way uh, the way you think about these words and and the the way you precisely pick them translates to any prompt that you will ever generate. So you know, pay pay close attention to to all this. Um, let's See, just that's test actually a really really good point. I, I so what I always say is that writers. I mean, any any creatives, any real artists have a major advantage if if they if they embrace these AI tools because usually they they have a vocabulary that is very very specific, and especially writers have. <laughs> I mean, they obviously have a vocabulary that's so vast Academics that they can too. they can think of excellent words to describe things. Yeah, I, I agree. It's really, um, it's really uh, when you when you already have the ability from some other um, job to be surgical with with your words, um, then you have a real a tangible advantage here, honestly. And also a lot of the academic, um, like a lot of the vocabulary that comes from the academic sphere, people like to make fun of that sometimes like, it's like wow what are what are those words for like nobody knows them nobody uses them why are you use, using those well in a lot of cases that's a fair point especially if you're like in a normal conversation right but when it comes to this it's a superpower those ultra specific words that are you know three times as long as what maybe a normal human would use it's that long for a reason. It describes one very particular thing in a very particular context. And guess what? That's exactly what prompts want. So, you know, a little, little pro tip there. If you want to make your prompts better, like look for academic language and don't shy away from long and detailed words. So the, the, the picture just finished generating. Let's have a look at it together here. So, okay, right here. Let's full screen this. Yeah, this is... This is more like it, but we have a we we're facing uh, the um, we have a problem with placing our cats here, right? The cats are mm -hmm. not encircling the mountain, which is which is interesting. I can't see the image yet. Still waiting for it to look. I may have to reload the stream from ah oh, here. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now it's there. Yes. It's still not encircling, huh? Yeah, so we still didn't manage to to place the cats all uh, around it. Let's let's keep hacking uh, at this, um, and let's let's try and figure this out. You know what I think? I think the problem here, and and this may sound counterintuitive, but I think the problem is that we picked product photography, and I, th I it's just a gut feeling, but okay. I think it is trying to stuff everything into a very specific space like a product that's being showcased. And that is why it's not necessarily creating a proper scene where it's using all of the space. So I think maybe, maybe we change the, the style instead. If we, if we really insist on having them circle. Like so how about landscape photography? That is gonna, mm. that's going to be uh, too wide, right? Those are usually like 14 millimeter lenses, um, six, stuff like yeah. that. So uh, that's that's going to be too too wide. But what you can do is you can also widen your aspect ratio a little bit because um, the big, yeah. sometimes that also influences how Midjourney uses the space that's available, right? So I hmm. okay. So let's just say photography. Let's just say photography. Computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green mountain encircled by an army of cats and now yeah and add, add a aspect ratio of three to two okay maybe okay done let's run this okay oh also, oh. I, I have my style set too high. What were you using as stylized? Wait. Okay, I'll, I'll set it. I, I believe uh, medium is the default, right? 
I think you, oh, you've high, yeah, you've set it to high. Yeah. Medium is a default. Yeah. 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 All right. And that, that was that yeah. be better. Okay. Ooh, this is looking more like it. Look at that. Yeah, you were right. It was the constraints of the photography part of the prompt that limited this. And see, this, this is the type of stuff, like, they don't teach this in uni. They, don't, they barely even teach this on YouTube. You're going to have to, like, go in here and you're going to have to explore a keyword like product photography yourself to understand the limitations of it. Um, By the way, Robco made a really great um, suggestion. You can try adding cinematic in front of the photography because that might create a more interesting overall right. scene as well. Thanks, Robco. Nice. So let's do that with, uh, with our next attempt here. Um, also, I don't want to hold you up here, right? If you have to go, you have to go. There is I'm, no, no I'm, I'm running a bit late, but I sent a message real quick that I'm going to be <laughs> slightly delayed. So it's fine. I'm guys, having too much fun here right now. <laughs> guys, 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 this is, this is great. Look, um, he's doing us a little bit of a favor here and helping us out with the mid-journey prompting. So if you guys appreciate that, then two things, two things. First of all, hit that like button because why would you not? And secondly, um, head on over to his channel, check out his content, like truly. Truly, if you're trying to learn more about my journey, that is the place to go. You'll find in-depth tutorials on all this, waiting, seeds, everything you want to know. You'll find it on there. He has dedicated videos for all of it. Um, yeah, I would just say do that. Go go at least check it out. Uh, mint audio quality. Nothing nothing to worry about there at all. <laughs> it's all. No, it's, it's if, like if, it happens. Yeah, it's fine. If anybody out there is trying to figure out how to do consistent characters in B5, I'm, I've been working on that all day today because uh, people are struggling with that ever since the switch. And to be honest, it's not that different. And I'm, I'm, I'll probably be releasing a video on that fairly soon. Um, so Fantastic. you might want to stick around there. That's, I'll tell you, that's one of the most requested things I get with Midjourney. But I just figured there's so many, so much content uh, to out there, and usually if I don't have like even like anything to add to the discussion, I just don't make the content. I always just like to like insert like new experiences or knowledge into it. So yeah, if you, if you're interested in uh, consistent characters, um, there's many tutorials on his channel covering that, plus a new one on V5 coming. So with that being said, let's get back to the screen share here. And um, I'll just run this with cinematic photography while we evaluate our results in Midjourney V5 right here. So this is what we got. So this is the bottom right one is closer to what I was imagining here myself. This is this is definitely on there. The obvious problem is still that the cats are kind of on the hill and not encircling the hill. So it might have an issue with that en encircling keyword. Um, mm. Maybe he doesn't know how to interpret that. So, how about this? How about we say, um, do we still have an army of cats or is it just cats? Um, I believe we still, yes, we still have an army. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, then let's say an army of cats um, forming a circle. Ah. It's tricky, yeah. It's tricky. How, how can we? Yeah. Do that? So maybe, mm. maybe I think I don't really see doing an army here, right? Because an army would be like I don't know, four hundred cats or something like that. So let's try yeah. and switch that aspect of it up. Meanwhile, we added um, cinematic photography here, and it's generating this new image where it's the same prompt but with cinematic photography and a different aspect ratio. So that's actually quite cool. Look at that. It kind of creates like it. It does the so. There's this term from like cinematography from directing, uh, which is called blocking, and it's essentially how you lay out your um, the subjects and the characters yeah. in the scene. And here, um, yeah, the blocking is very very movie like. You know, you you kind of have like your foreground objects. You mm. have there's a lot of layers to it. That's what I would say. Um, if you if you review this closely, you'll see you have your foreground uh, subject right here. Then you have another even closer foreground subject here. And then all the way in the back, you, you have these mountains. Then another layer, you have these birds. And then like all these animals in between. So what this what the cinematic photography keyword is really doing, it's giving it a lot of depth. You can also see here on the bottom right, like 
you have the mouse, the rocks, then you have the, this is another uh, plane, then you have the hill, then you have, you know, the hill, another hill, then you have the clouds in the background, trees in between. There's a lot of depth. If you compare that and contrast that with our picture before, it was really like the mouse, the hill, and the background, maybe some clouds, right? So that's three to four um, or four, let's say. And here we're looking more at one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe, you know, even more. So, you know, looking at these, this image, right? I, I really want to make the mouse look more like, not just like a ma computer mouse, like at least give it some fur. Okay. Okay. I, I like that suggestion, actually. I, I think you're spot on. Um, it seems a little out of place. So, I, I mean, so what? It's still, it should stay a computer mouse, but let's like furry computer mouse. Yeah, furry. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned about what it's gonna look like, but <laughs> no, it should be fine. We we saw the gingerbread computer mouse. That was quite enjoyable. Okay, so let's uh, see. I... Furry computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green hill, a lush green mountain. I think mountain worked actually quite well here, right? Yeah. I think that worked and circled by an army of cats. So let's let's try switching up the army part here and see what we get. Encircled by an battalion. How about that? <laughs> or, or, or maybe just just try just saying many cats. Or, oh, or simple. Encircled by many cats. Oh, Uzor also made a good recommendation. Made a good suggestion. He said, in circular formation. That's also not bad. Okay. Okay. On top of a lush green mountain. And then. Mm, yeah, it doesn't fit our sentence. That's the problem. We could say surrounded by, by cats in a circular formation. And here's, this is just my mind going off on tangents again, but wouldn't it be awesome if there, if it was like an army of cat ladies with their cats attacking the mouse? I think that would be kind of. <laughs> That, that, that would be my favorite version of this. Maybe we can, maybe I can give this a shot after you log off, but uh, we're surrounded by cats. Um, wait. What was that? You just leave out the many, yeah. Yeah, yeah Lovecraft Mountain surrounded by, by, wait. Circular formation, surrounded by cats in a circular formation, not formulation. formation. So here's a little trick, right? So what I usually do is um, like, well, we'll stick with what you're writing now, okay. but sometimes when I can't think of the right words to use, what I'll do is I'll go to Google images and I'll search for a certain phrase and then I'll have a look at the images, whether they actually represent what I'm looking for. Um, ah, there you go. There you go. That's very smart. The, yeah. the, the, so the flip side to that is you can also, if you can't think of any words, you can go to like a stock image website and then look at the images that you actually want and then check out what words are they using as tags and description. And then sometimes that will work as well. That is that is very smart. Um, I, what a fantastic tip. Let's just do that super quickly while this generates. So this is one I used to use a lot. Um, it's just pond5.com and they're usually paid, but they're quite like high quality. Um, and they have both, uh, you know, video and photo, but uh, other sites like Shutterstock or if you want a free alternative, Pexels would specialize in photos. So we can just go in here and be like, you know, cats, or, or we can be like mountains, for example, right? And then what you recommended is opening up some of these and be like, oh, this is really pretty. This is kind of the setting that I maybe envisioned. Yeah, perfect. Like a winter landscape like this. And then, uh, so the way this works is uh, the sellers need to do as good of a job as possible at keywording these. So because the entire traffic here comes from the search, there's no like recommendation engine like YouTube has, uh, very minimal. They have like a newsletter or something, but that's in the homepage, but that's kind of it. So they are really good at keywording this stuff. And if you go down here, um, you will see related categories. What a great hack to find keywords, huh? You can just go in here and look at like related keywords and um, I'm not 100% positive that they list the keywords on this one. 
you have all the photography details, right? You could just copy paste this. You could just copy paste the focal length um, right here, 16 millimeter uh, aperture 5.6 EOS 7D to get a similar look. You can just find like reference images and copy some of these. And on the other sides, you also have the keywords down there. But again, that that is just a little tangent, a little tip. Anyway, I believe we have um, we have a result here. So cinematic photography, furry computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green mountain surrounded by cats in a circular formation. What is going on here? I really like this first image. That is just it's like aesthetically very pleasing. But let me say this: um, our we do have furry mice, but not a furry computer mouse, right? And we we <laughs> there's no there's no surrounding here. So what I I am honestly I'm a little confused at this point. What do you make of this? What do you make of this? Because in V4. With like stable diffusion, we would have had this already, right? Let's maybe say that. It's it's weird. But wait, is this the cat ladies one? No, no, no. The, the, this is that one. That one's Sorry, down I'm, here. I'm not sure which one I'm looking at right no, now. No, this is the normal one. <laughs> cat, cat, lady, cat ladies one didn't perform as expected either. I'll just say that. But... um. Uh, this is weird. This is one of those where I would just be like, what did you do? Just, you know, just regenerate. I would just run it once more. Yeah, but that's the thing. So you can you can always reroll because in the end, sometimes you just happen to pick or the, the images that you get are just the random weird variation, right? Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, what we did here is we were doing something very odd, right? We're combining elements that are normally, yes. you know, the, the, there's little relation yes. between them. <laughs> yes, not. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, yes. No, so this is like, and I like that we picked this because this is really like pushing it. It's it's stress testing it. This is not, you know, a cat with a hat. Although that is that is a bit, bit abstract. It's, it's probably my favorite prompt of all times. And it's just going to get you a cat with a hat. And it works every single time. Um, guys, do this yourself. A cat with a hat. Let's do it. Just AR 16 by nine, done, simple. And this works, right? But here we're trying to combine two different worlds. So if I regenerate this, this circular formation is giving us um, kind of an oval, um, yeah. you know, it's not working for the prompt. So I, I, th I think, the problem, I think, is also, you know, we're, since we're trying to do this as photography, it's it's also constrained by what is realistic in photography, right? So, of course, you can create all sorts of weird things, but there's, in the end, it's, it's, it's trained to be more realistic, right? And if you're trying to create things that don't exist, it's going to be difficult. If you use a more sort of fantasy digital art style, I would not be surprised if this was a bit easier. Um, I, I though I don't know to be honest. No, no, no. I, I think I think you hit hit uh, hit it on like sp you described that perfectly. I think that's exactly what's going on because as we saw before, by saying product photography, we really limited it to this kind of like tabletop setup with like a macro lens with a lot of depth of field, and we we really put a lot of constraints on it, right? And then if you're trying to you know do like hills and cats and mountains and like whatever like it's not gonna let you because it was trained on a set of product photography and that's what you're operating within right you kind of like enter this little frame of all the product photography that it learned on and then if you're trying to break out it's just it's just not gonna work because this stuff is only as good as the data that it was trained on so i think you you said it exactly right um, if we're asking for photography, we kind of have to operate in the realm of real realistic image images. And we have to think about what was this trained on? It was not trained on, you know, cats sur surrounding a hill. Like, I don't think it maybe just does not have that. And, and that's perfectly fine. And then you have to move on. Uh, could we make this happen? Maybe. Maybe I feel like the way it positioned the cats on the hill and on, on this hill, um, I, I think we could find a way to position them at the bottom of the hill 
and a lot of them, and then we could find a way to position the mouse exactly at the top. I think we could achieve these things if we get we, very precise. We, we definitely could. Um, and, uh, and also remember that since, since we're using V5, which is much, much slower right now, yes. if we were using V4, we would be iterating through all sorts of different ideas much quicker. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's also a limitation right now. Interesting. So maybe let's give it let's give it one more shot. Let's give it one more shot and and um, round this out while we look yeah. at this magnificent cat with a hat. Um, <laughs> just yeah. it's perfect. Like these look, they're they're perfect. Like because if you think about it, like there's a billion cat pictures this was strained on, and placing a hat on top of it is like look every single one of these is perfect. I love it. Okay, Guy, yeah, there's guys are dropping like hearts and likes. They seem to enjoy the cats. The cats. <laughs> cats always, internet and cats always it works. works. <laughs> I, t I worked with my editor. He was like, what examples do I pick? I'm like, cats. And he's like, wait, but, but cat, who, nobody cares about cats. I'm like, what? You know, how do you, have you met the internet? Everybody loves a cat. So, you know, the one, one of the first things that I tried to create um, in my journey was, do you, so I, I, I used to do tons of stuff in print on demand. And one of the big things are those all over shirts where you have space cats with laser eyes. I don't uh, know whether you guys... Yeah, 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 I'm familiar. Where every like square centimeter is, is covered. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've got these cats just floating through space and they've got red laser eyes. And I tried to create that, but it wasn't that as easy as I thought. I thought there would be much more, I don't know, really? data That's out there. Great. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe you just have to add the laser eyes in post and like in like Photoshop or something. I'm gonna try prompting that right now here, and I'll see whether that works, and then I'll send it over. For <laughs> this it is does. too much fun. Honestly, I I feel a little bad that, that we're like holding you up here. Maybe you should just go on like, uh, to your next thing. Yeah, I, like, but but uh, it, this is. I'm going to try this real quick. <laughs> okay, 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 it's it's worth it. Laser laser cat. Um, it's just so much fun to play with these prompts and to explore this together. I mean, we both have a bunch of like recipes that work and a bunch of approaches that work, but it's it's really this like open ocean, blue ocean exploration that is the most enjoyable to me. That's why I got into this space and that's why I'm so interested in this stuff. I mean, this is no coincidence. I was doing this naturally anyway, you know, and just created content around it. Um, okay, so what I did here is maybe this this would be like interesting to talk about briefly. But what I did here, I removed the photography part of the prompt, the first one, right, where we said cinematic yeah. photography, and I just left the rest of the prompt, and it, it's finishing up as we speak right here. I'm actually kind of surprised by this. I thought that you know the the base setting of V5 would um, be a little more realistic than this. What do you think of this? So I can't see it yet. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Can you maybe, uh, is the stream a little, oh, oh, no, no, that's fair. That's fair. It's coming up. Ah, there it okay, is. Okay. So I see now. So is this the, the furry computer mouse one? Yes. Furry computer mouse. Everything, everything is identical. So I think this would be an interesting approach to troubleshooting it, right? Removing like the photography constraint that we imposed on it. And now we can see that. You know, yeah. the placement of the cats has nothing to do with like the co photography aspect of our prompt. No, no, no. But but it does have a little bit to do, I think, with the positioning. And the the the, the, pro the thing with the circ I think that do we have the word circular in our prompt right now? We do, we do. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's creating that shape, those yeah. shapes on the right, right? Um I think because it's not clear that 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 this is linked to the cats, right? Um I mean it's kind of surrounded by cats. I, I like. I'm not really sure why the mouse in the bottom left one is submerged into the ground. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you make a good point. <laughs> let, let me just try. Let me just try this. No. I, oh, I, I managed to create my space good. cats. Oh, wait. I'm gonna share a prompt with you right now. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And you'll see this. This. I mean, oh, this is gonna be hilarious. People wear shirts that are completely um, plastered with uh, this stuff, and this is not a joke. This is okay, okay. everybody. You you can now generate your own space cats. Okay. It's it, they don't have the laser eyes yet. I don't know why, but but the rest is everything that you can find on Amazon as well. You can buy these as shirts. Okay, no joke. I, I, incredible. Let's let's do this. So I'll just say. <laughs> 
it's it's it kind of falls into the category the most ugly shirts in the world but super popular that's a good category to be in i i like the extremes of most like that makes it interesting um lovely so i ran that prompt through v5 right yeah okay if you do it in v4 maybe it'll be even more fancy but i don't know i'll try that too real quick okay Okay, meanwhile, we're, we're getting a uh, furry computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green mountain surrounded by cats at the bottom of the mountain. This is what I did now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this ain't working. <laughs> this is not, this is not it. This is not it. This looks like some somebody learning Photoshop over here. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like the type oh. of stuff I created when I was 15. All right. So, ooh, ooh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Cats with laser eyes floating through space surrounded by pizzas. <laughs> Man, I am loving okay. this. I got, a be I got an even better one. Uh, I mean, it's the same one, but I got the lasers now, too. Oh my God! Uh, please, yes, yes. Let's do it. I just need to. I just need to figure out whether 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 I'm going to give you the V4, or the V5 prompt because okay, I can switch. Both are interesting. They're just different. <gasps> um, I really like the realism in V5, though. I think this is so cool. Guys, what do you make of this? Wait, let's do it. Let's do a little. Uh, you know, let's do a little poll. Uh, I'm curious to hear what our viewers think here. Start a poll. Okay, let's do this. So, do you love this? And then, then there's there's like there's like two options. You can either say yes or you can say yes. Go ahead, guys, vote, vote. Okay, so uh, okay, I'm afraid I have to admit that the V4 version is better. So I'm gonna send you that one. Really? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let, yeah. me, let me see. Because it's more stylized, that's why I, I I would have to test more with the stylized parameter okay. in order to get the V5 one to work. Um, the V5 one's too realistic right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I do like the realistic pizzas though. Uh, the cat, yeah, but but okay. Uh, let's see. Let's just test the V4 prompt. Right. I forgot. And guys, I, I'm so glad that um, so many viewers joined us here to to like follow us on this journey because you know it's it's not it's not what it always looks like in those edited down videos. You know, usually when you get your nice and crunchy eight minute video, what is behind that is you know. Uh, a grown man sitting as a at his computer for a, a full day or two and typing different words into the keyboard and trying to figure out which combination works. And then we go ahead and we present like what works, right? But this is what it really looks like. You're sitting here and you're like, why can't these, this goddamn cat just be at the bottom of the hill? Like, what do I, what am I doing wrong? Where did I go wrong in my life? Um, that That's how, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, so I think I think once this one finishes, I'm gonna have to drop off. But I want to leave you with this yeah. beauty because it's just it just <laughs> it's just. Are you kidding me, man? Okay, wow, wow. This is the kind of stuff you want to print on canvas and hang up on a wall, isn't it? I, honestly, <laughs> I might just do that. This second one, I'll just Photoshop in pepperoni or something. But like the way the way the cat is eating the pizza, I've never seen something like that before. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. Okay, so the poll, uh, we're gonna round out the poll. Um, Ninety-four percent of the people think that that yes, this is they do love this result. Great. <laughs> So I think this works so well because there's actually a surprising number of images on the internet that have exactly this concept. So that's why it's so doing it so well. Ah, wow. There you go. That's a real, uh, really good piece of advice right there. If, if I may, I'll just lean into that and let you off. Think about what has been done before within the constraints of what you're doing, right? If you're doing product photography, look at product photography inspirations because that's kind of the arena that you're entering. That's where you're going to be, you know, operating in. 
Um, but with that being said, I'll, I'll throw this up onto the screen. It, it can sit in between us. This is going to be my new green screen background. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal result. Um, let me just to round it out. Let me ask you, like, how did you arrive at this? Is this like, was this inspired by your background and in, in on-demand printing and that these worked and then you just started prompting around that? It's, it, it, you know, when you, if you, <sighs> The thing is, if you've done anything in the merch space, then you're confronted with everything that people actually buy, not just what is aesthetic, but what people literally buy. And it's one of the places where you see the weirdest stuff, I swear to God. And this is just, it's synonymous for the entire weirdness of the print on demand merch t-shirt yeah. space, this thing. It's uh, all right. Interesting. Like, that's the thing. I, I don't know. I would buy this. <laughs> exactly like okay cool uh, amazing christian thank you so much for the session um a super yeah. quick recap would be we, we talked about the gpt i actually i'm gonna do the summary once you leave you have to run thank you so much for taking the time again guys i cannot repeat this enough if you want more mid journey content if you want to learn how to do consistent characters across your prompts this is your man <laughs> he knows how to generate space kittens with pizza, but he also knows how to like craft actually stunning results and teaches you how to do it step by step. So if you want more Majorney content, uh, stop spamming my emails. I'm doing what I can. This man has you covered. Um, uh, all right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the 20 to 30 minutes turned into almost two hours. <laughs> Thank, thanks for having me. Um, I'll try to sort out my, my mic and then next time we'll have better audio. Sounds good. Sorry about that, guys. Sounds perfect. But, I, I would love, honestly, I would love to do more of these, just this like live prompting session with an audience. Uh, sorry, we were kind of caught up in, in like the, the intricacies of like audio problems and mid journey V5 and everything that I didn't get to interact as much with chat on this one as I wish I would, but we certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I, I'm keeping my eye on the chat. Every time I look over here, I'm kind of looking at the chat. Every time I'm over here, I'm, I'm, I'm on the screen. So thanks again right. for joining us. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you again. Um, yeah, I I'll think this was really you. fun. All right, Take have a good care. one. Cheers, Bye. guys. Have some more fun. <laughs> yes, we will, we will. So that, ladies and gentlemen, rounds out our first guest and... With that, I mean, we have, we have, you know, a little bit more time going on. We have this whole situation going on. As I said, we've been upgrading several things around here. And let me tell you, this is amazing. And again, the prompt to generate this, uh, I'll just share this. V4 seems to be better. I'll just share this with you guys in the chat. Um, then I'll go on over to this. We'll, we'll do another fancy camera move just because we can. And yeah, let me ask you, did you guys learn something? Was this a valuable uh, way to spend your time? Because that's always my goal. Um, I, I apologize for the, um, the slight... <laughs> my interview setup, huh? Actually, let, let me move this over here. This is a fantastic idea. I apologize for the for the inconveniences with the audio. I'll just replace Christian here with with the cat picture he provided us with. Incredible stuff. Um, okay. Whatever. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, I would like to do a quick summary so we can all take away something from this stream. So. First of all, we learned that uh, V5 accepts a different style of prompts to V4, right? And that's why it's, it's a good idea to use GPT-4, right? Unfortunately, it was down today. But if you go to my YouTube video uh, that, I, that was uploaded four days ago, you will find the exact prompt that generates um, stunning results. Truly stunning results, okay? Um, uh, the tutorial is in that video. This is Christian's channel here. You can find a bunch more mid-journey tutorials. And 
Um, what I wanted to add is that we talked about the limitations of Midjourney v5 in terms of not taking infinite length prompts, right? You can't just give it an essay. And my uh, the prompt that I presented to you in that video actually produces long results. They're too long for Midjourney. Nevertheless, if you run it like 20 times, you're going to find different aspects of that prompt included in your result, okay? So... I think that's a fantastic thing to keep in mind. So take the outputs that you get from that prompt and cherry pick. Pick your favorite parts or pick the first paragraph and paste it into my journey. It's still a little too long for it to consider every single thing that that prompt might contain, but it's an excellent starting point. I've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from you guys over the course of the last week. Uh, since I uploaded that, saying that it's it, it was really helpful and it was really a fantastic starting point to get started with Midjourney v5 because just with these like super short prompts, uh, you're not going to get the most stunning results. Like, now given, a cat with a hat uh, might be the exception here just because it's the most epic prompt out there. But usually, you, especially if you're trying to achieve a precise result, you're going to want longer prompts and there's no better way to, than getting started with gpt4 right now so check out that video for more details on that then i would like to talk about the fact that you know today here on the stream we extensively tried to make this work we tried to create a cinematic uh, a photograph or a photograph of a furry computer mouse sitting on top of a lush green mountain surrounded by cats in a circular formation we tried multiple approaches it worked on uh, the gingerbread textured mouse at first but this particular result we were not able to achieve now look both of us agree that if we didn't have, you know, kind of like everything that comes with a live stream and the audio issues and everything. And we spent another half an hour here. We could have found a way to make this work. Uh, I'll just give you a quick look into my mind in terms of how I would dissect it. I would start by isolating the computer mouse on top of a mountain. I would, I would really like refine the prompt until that works out. And then I would start adding in the cats. And I would, I would look for different approaches. So army of cats, a battalion of cats. Uh, then I would look for what is the word that is used to when you refer to a group of cats, right? With birds, it's a flock of birds. With cats, there's probably going to be another one that I don't know right now. I would go to Google. I would look for that word. And then the more precise you can get on your words, the better the results are going to be. That's the thinking behind that. And then if we, we got that right in isolation and we got the mountain right in isolation, we would bring them together. We would maybe even use a text. Uh, we would use weights uh, to combine those two pictures. That's what this would look like if we had more time and less issues. Uh, and then we would have... Uh, uh, arrived at a result that would have satisfied our needs. Either way, I think this has been very educational. Uh, we showed you a bunch of amazing prompts yet again, a cat with a hat being the best one by far. But I mean, honestly, this cats with laser eyes floating through space surrounded by pizza one, uh, this is a strong contender. This is V5. And then if you look into the V4 one, yeah, I think, I think he's right. These are actually... These are excellent. Feel free to copy any of those in your work. Um... And yeah, I think that that rounds it out for today. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Um, this is going to be it for today. Why is your stream so low FPS? Uh, I have to. That's a good question. The stream current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. It's probably because we're streaming in 4K and there's some uh, something going on in here. I might have to check on the lady downstairs. What is she downloading? I don't know. We might find out in next week's live stream here on the AI Advantage channel. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining, guys. I will see you next Monday at 5 p.m. when we explore AI together. Maybe Midjourney, maybe ChatGPT. We have another cool upload coming this week. I'll see you in the Discord. Thank you so much. Have a good day.